What if the world's most famous predator is quietly rewriting the map right now? In the last few years, great white sharks have been spotted further north than ever before, cruising the cold waters off Nova Scotia, a place that until recently was considered well outside their comfort zone. But that's only on one side of the Atlantic. On the other side, the Northeast Atlantic, there's a mystery. Despite decades of research, no confirmed modern sightings of white sharks have ever been recorded here. None. Zero. So here's the question that a few people have started to ask. As temperatures continue to rise and invisible ocean barriers change, could 2026 be the moment that white sharks push that little bit further and finally cross into waters they've never officially claimed before? Today then, we're diving into both sides of the Atlantic, the science behind warming seas and rain shifts, and whether the absence of great whites in the Northeast Atlantic is about to end sooner than anyone expects. Welcome back to another Shark Bites episode, everyone. So as of the time of recording this video, it is three three days until Christmas, so I thought I'd treat you guys to one of my festive jumpers. What do we think? Thumbs up or thumbs down for the jumper? Right, now, before we talk about where white sharks are heading to, we first got to understand why they move at all. These big sharks, unlike most others, are partially warm-blooded, or in more scientific terms, regionally endothermic. This gives them a huge advantage over most other fish in that they can keep their muscles, brain, and even their eyes warmer than the surrounding water, meaning they've got superior hunting power and a wider habitat range than the vast majority of fish in the ocean. But this super ability still has its limits. Our best research suggests that these sharks generally prefer water temperatures between 12 and 24 degrees Celsius. That's about 53 to 75 Fahrenheit. Of course, there's always exceptions to those numbers there, but that temperature tolerable range is a general rule of thumb. And so when we see white sharks crop up in places that are outside those temperatures, it's not that their inner temperature tolerable range is changing, but it's more to do with the actual ocean temperatures changing and the sharks are altering their movements to try and get to grips with those environmental changes. For example, we've got the infamous white shark attack in April 1992 on a snorkeler at Campbell Island, a sub-Antarctic island south of New Zealand, where the waters were recorded at 7 degrees Celsius on the day of the incident. But Campbell Island for many years has been warming up at pretty fast rates, and even back then in 1992, at around the same time of year, which was March-April time, it wasn't unusual for water temperatures to be around 12 degrees Celsius, which you'll see is within the temperature range for white sharks. For these sharks, though, that water temperature is really important. In waters too warm, they become inefficient. Their metabolism increases and all their basic functions like swimming or digesting food consumes a lot more energy. And then in waters too cold, their metabolism slows, their muscles lose function and their activity levels decrease. So when white sharks are moving around, they're constantly balancing things like water temperature, prey availability and preferred habitat types like nursery areas or breeding grounds. And so as oceans warm, those suitable zones don't just disappear, they shift. And that's where things get pretty interesting. Let's start then in the Northeast Pacific. White sharks here traditionally have been long associated with places like California, Baja, and Guadalupe Island. But in recent years, tagging studies have documented juvenile and sub-adult white sharks appearing further north than expected. Suddenly, big numbers of these sharks were cropping up in places like Monterey Bay, who had seen white sharks before, sure, but nowhere near the numbers they were seeing now. Spearfishers have started encountering white sharks in the waters off Oregon, and they're even occasionally being spotted in in the very chilly waters of British Columbia, with several sharks having washed up on beaches in the last two years. And sure, historically, if you were to go back 50 years or so, all of those places that I've just mentioned to you would have had the occasional white shark sighting. But in the last 10 or 15 years, the regularity of those encounters just keeps on going up. One of the major drivers for this range expansion in the Northeast Pacific, and what the vast majority of research papers point to, has been marine heat waves. Severe events like the blob, which was that massive warm water anomaly in the Pacific, temporarily shifted suitable habitat northwards, and the sharks duly followed. This Pacific expansion appears to involve younger sharks, though, who are exploring these new viable ecosystems. And that's really important because juvenile range expansion often does come before permanent population shifts, as the juveniles tend to have higher dispersal tendencies. And when you go into these new areas as a younger individual, it's likely you'll have less competition for resources against those bigger adults. In other words, here in the Northeast Pacific, what we're seeing right now could be a preview of where adult white sharks might end up in the future. Future. Importantly though, we do have to consider that while juveniles might arrive first, for a successful range expansion, you've got to have those big, mature, reproducing adults moving into the area as well. Which looks to be what we're seeing across on the other American coast here in the Northwest Atlantic. It's on this coast that we've got some of the clearest evidence globally for range expansion in these sharks. 30 years ago, white sharks were pretty uncommon off the coast of New England and Maine. Back in the 70s and 80s, overfishing and a low abundance of natural prey species meant that sightings here were rare. but Researchers who were tagging the occasional white shark off Cape Cod started to notice
notice something strange. Not only were the sharks showing up here in greater numbers, they were staying longer and slowly moving further north. Between 2010 and 2020, there were confirmed detections occurring regularly off Maine, but also in Nova Scotia and the Gulf of St. Lawrence. But what changed for this to happen? Well, first, it was the seals. After the Marine Mammal Protection Act was signed into law by President Nixon in 1972, it gave big protections to all marine mammals, including seals. The act itself protected seals from human activities like hunting, harassment, or capture, and it also banned the import and export of marine mammals and their products. Within 20 years, harbor and gray seal populations boomed along the US Northeast coast, and for a predator that specializes in hunting seals, the region, within a relatively short space of time, became an all-you-can-eat buffet. But more recently, since about 2019, these sharks have started to push further north than the US into eastern Canadian waters. Research published back in 2025 showed the probability of detecting white sharks in places like Halifax and the Cabot Strait in Nova Scotia more than tripled in a three-year period. Tripled. This dramatic increase in their occurrence is paired with some of the fastest warming sea surface temperatures in the world. In the Gulf of Maine, which stretches to southern Nova Scotia, the water has warmed more than three times faster than the global average over the past 30 years, and seven times faster in the last 15 years, which means that much of these Atlantic Canadian waters that were once seasonally too cold are now beginning to sit within the white shark's temperature tolerable range for longer periods year on year. And as we move further into 2026 and beyond, researchers who are working with these sharks in this part of the world expect this trend to continue with white sharks routinely using these northern waters as hunting grounds rather than brief summer stopovers. But now we reach the big mystery. If great white sharks are expanding in the Northeast Pacific and they're expanding in the Northwest Atlantic, then why hasn't the Northeast Atlantic, particularly the waters around the UK, had a confirmed modern white shark sighting? We've had white sharks in Northern Europe off the coasts of France and Spain, both historically and recently. There's unverified reports and plenty of rumors in places like Cornwall and Scotland, but no confirmed, scientifically accepted modern sightings in the UK yet. So is that really about to change? Well, as it stands, there are several possible explanations for this strange absence. We do have the preferred prey sources for white sharks here in the UK. Cornwall and Scotland both have populations of harbour and grey seals, albeit 90% of them are up here in Scotland. In terms of pure numbers, there's actually probably more seals in the UK as a whole than there is in Cape Cod. But if you combine Cape Cod and Nova Scotia together, the numbers change quite considerably. Sable Island, nestled just offshore and below Halifax in Nova Scotia, has the largest grey seal population in the world with around 350,000 individuals. Combine that with the Cape Cod numbers and you get to 400,000, nearly four times the number of seals we have here in the UK. UK. Even if you include the resurgence of bluefin tuna here in Cornwall, the distribution and abundance of prey might not yet match what the white sharks are relying on in the Northwest Atlantic. These sharks are energy efficient hunters. If the calorific payoff isn't worth the journey, they're generally not going to make that journey. I think one explanation that's often overlooked when we think about the movements of these sharks are migration barriers. The vast majority of white sharks don't simply randomly wander between ocean basins. Their populations are often separated by invisible barriers that make up bio geographical realms. KP did an awesome video on these realms over on her channel which explains them brilliantly so you should definitely go and check that out but they're often distinguished by things like underwater currents, deep ocean crossings or physical barriers. For example the mid-Atlantic ridge is a huge underwater mountain range that carves down the north and south Atlantic and it does act as a bit of a barrier between the east and the west. I'm sure lots of you will point out at this point Lydia the white shark who was one of O-Search's satellite tagged sharks that crossed the mid-Atlantic ridge back in 2014 and she was the first white shark to ever be recorded doing so. But if I just quickly show you her satellite pings on Osearch's website, here you can see each ping as a yellow dot, and then the lines between each ping, and I'll also annotate on the mid-Atlantic ridge there. And although you can see her up here on the 10th of March 2014 that she briefly crossed over the ridge, and then did it again a month later in April 2014 down here, just have a look at how much of her movements are restricted by that ridge. For the most part, she's barely traversing along it here in 2014, and then again here in 2015, she's swimming parallel to it, but not going over. The only other white shark we have in the history of satellite tag white sharks to cross the ridge was Nagumi in 2021, which would suggest to me that more often than not, these sharks stay west of it, almost as if it was a barrier. And so the Northeast Atlantic might just be poorly connected to existing white shark populations in the Mediterranean or the Western Atlantic, not entirely 
blocked, but it's not exactly a shark highway. If we were to hone in on temperature here as a factor as well, it's not just as simple as saying, well, the waters here are about the right temperature and they're becoming more viable. We have to think about temperature from a broader perspective. For example, we know that when white sharks make long distance migrations, they'll hang out deeper in the water column. So we have to consider what those deep water temperatures are, not just the surface temperatures. And if these deep water temperatures aren't right, then that's potentially gonna restrict their movements. Then you've also got to look at seasonal variations in those temperatures as well. So we've got summer waters that are about right, but winter maybe less so, and that'll change as we move into the future, sure. But if you start pairing that with all the other restricting factors that I've just mentioned, it starts getting a bit more unlikely. Warming temperatures alone doesn't just automatically create suitable habitat. There's a lot more at play here. I suppose one really simple explanation for their apparent absence, though, is that we've just not seen one. And just because we haven't seen one, that doesn't mean they're not there. It makes it incredibly unlikely, yeah but not impossible. The Northeast Atlantic is a vast ocean space and white sharks are relatively rare even in the places that we know they exist. So without extensive tagging and monitoring programs going on here, there's absolutely a chance that an occasional transient shark could pass through unnoticed. But if we're talking about chances, then it's just as likely that there simply aren't that many great white sharks in this part of the world anymore. The Mediterranean population is critically endangered, so the numbers aren't even remotely close to what we're talking about either side of North America. I think looking ahead to 2026 and beyond, scientists out there aren't predicting a sudden invasion of white sharks to northern Europe or UK waters. But based on a few case studies in other parts of the world, there are some people that are keeping an eye on it. As ocean temperatures change and prey distribution shift, and importantly, if white shark populations recover under protections, the probability of these sharks venturing into new territories increases. I think if a confirmed sighting were to occur, say in Cornwall or even up in Scotland, it wouldn't necessarily mean that these sharks have moved in, it would more likely mean that a range exploring individual was testing the boundaries of what's possible. That's exactly how expansions begin. The story of great whites moving north isn't really a shark story, it's an ocean story. It's about how a changing climate, conservation and ecosystem recovery are all reshaping our coastal waters in ways that we're only just starting to understand. On America's east and west coast, we're seeing undeniable evidence that these sharks are adapting to a changing world, and here in the UK and the Northeast Atlantic, the absence of evidence might not mean absence forever. It's just that those conditions haven't quite fully aligned yet. Do you reckon we'd be ready to coexist with white sharks here in the UK? I'm not really sure we are, you know. What do you guys reckon? Are we going to get a confirmed white shark sighting here in the UK in the next decade? Let me know what you think in the comments. Before you shoot off though, if you enjoyed today's deep dive into white shark movements, then you might quite enjoy this video right here. In it, we look at the white sharks living in and around the Mediterranean and whether some pesky killer whales might actually be blocking their movements around the Strait of Gibraltar. So make sure you give it a click.